Hey y'all, hey! <laughs> um, okay, if anyone is wondering why I am wearing a towel on my head, it is because I finally, 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 God is so great, I finally took down my stinky braids. Like, yeah, they stank. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my God, they were... They were long overdue. They were long overdue. And even though I wore the style well, I, I mean, I'm not taking credit for it. I'm just saying thanks be to God. You can see in the other videos, I was wearing the style. It was looking good, but it stank. It was stinky. And you know what? Like the thing is, it wasn't smelly like, you know, like to the naked nose, <laughs> if I can put it that way. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm doing something on my computer here. So while that's doing, I thought I'd make a video. It wasn't smelly to the stinky nose. It was like, I, I, I was at mass and, you know, I saw this lady with really well coiffed hair. And I said to myself, Lord, I would like to do my hair. Wouldn't you know it? By the time I got home, I just had the urge and the drive to do, to take down that hair and take it down. I did was a bit tangled. It was all tangled. And uh, so I spent some time detangling. Then I washed it nicely. Then uh, I put, I, I just, you know, I didn't feel like doing anything. I didn't want to twist. I didn't want to whatever. I just put it up in a small little puff. Maybe I'll like, yeah. Then, um, then I just, you know, I scarfed it down. So here it is. Now the thing is, See, the product that I put, some coconut thing, kind of dried on white, right? <sighs> which is, uh, ugh, which is not ideal. And I don't want to wash my hair again. I don't feel like doing that. So, cause like me, I'm a Leo and I hate getting wet. Like I shower, but. Uh. So I was watching this video and the answer to that, when product dries on white, you put oil. <laughs> And now I know many people do not like oil, but uh, I don't either. I don't necessarily like the grief, but you know what? I was not going back under the shower again. And um, so I just put, why am I telling you all this? Oh my God. So I put that on and I said, okay, I'm just going to scarf this thing down. And, you know, cause I want to go out in a few minutes. I'm going to uh, like put on a wrap, just, you know, wrap my hair, like so, something like this. Yeah, something like that. And um, then maybe put on some big hoop earrings or something, um, which I which I have some. And you know what? That That's just going to be it. That's going to be the African style. <laughs> uh, maybe make this a little neater. But yeah, that's basically it. Because me, I am all about simplicity at this point. Um, and you know what? Let me just say that God has given me that inspiration. Like... The simpler your life is, the better it is, really. So let's begin with a word of prayer. All that, I was just giving you a hot tip, okay? Because I know you do your hair. <laughs> so the next time you have product drying on white, feel free to slather that thing down with some oil. I hope it works, eh? Like, it was still a bit white, but anyway, who knows? We'll see. And then scarf that baby down and you're good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here, to be here, to be, and to be here. Thank you for life. Thank you for um, Montreal. Thank you for Kenya. Thank you for anyone who's watching this, for family, for friends. Lord, I give thanks. You are almighty. You are El Shaddai, the almighty, the creator, the all-powerful, the one who holds everything in this universe together. I worship you. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you thanks. I pray that it is your voice that comes through in this video. And I may be just a tool, just a tool, just an instrument, just a pencil in your hand, Lord. Let your word, your eternal word, your life-giving word, your life that, your word that makes clean, uh, your life, your word that speaks life into existence come through in this video in the holy name of Jesus through the intercession of the most pure heart of Mary and together with the prayers of Saint Joseph. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, 
Hold up. I'm just gonna turn that AC on because no, you know what? I'm gonna open the window. No, you know, I'm gonna open the door. Cause it is hot. <gasps> it is a furnace up in here. No, let me not say that. It's a spa. It's a spa. Like so I like it here. I love it. Uh because uh Montreal is great in the summer. Um it's very beautiful outside, but it gets humid. I ain't even gonna lie, it gets humid. Um, but you know what? Me, I don't mind the humidity because it's a spa. Spa! Anyway, guys, today I want to talk about um, always inspired by the readings of... Uh, it's a Sunday, uh, and I'm inspired by the readings of today. Um, from the first reading, you know, all the readings of today, like in Wisdom, it says... I'm just going to take my little booklet here, that God did not create death. And he does not rejoice at the death of living beings. Um, this means, of course, our God is a God of life, right? And he creates something like a skateboard out there. Um, he he gave us life, you know, and life life in all abundance. Let's never forget, right? Me, one of my favorite verses is uh, it is in John John the abundant life right of course not that I need it oh, my Bible got wet um, <laughs> now that I need it I may not find it I really thought I marked it down but as you know I don't script these videos but anyway um, Jesus said that he is life and he is life in all abundance, right? Because he told us that, here it is, in John 10.10, 10, of course, so easy, 10.10, 10, John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come in order that you may have life, life in all its fullness, right? Um, and we see that Jesus has power over life and death. Remember, he told us so clearly that no one takes my life from me. I lay it down. I have Sorry, my computer distracted me. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. And we saw, I love the account of how you know, he brought Lazarus to life. Like this, four days after the fact that the man was dead, dead as a doornail, he's brought back to life, right? And the interesting thing is something in this booklet from today is that Jesus never speaks of death as finality. To him, remember when Lazarus died, he said that our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. And in today's gospel, when he brings back to life the little girl of Jairus, he says that why all this commotion? The child is only has only fallen asleep, right? Or is only sleeping. She's not dead. She's only sleeping. And of course, the people go and make fun of him, right? Um, but just notice how for him, death is not final uh, because... For him, and really for us who believe in him, the thing that's final is life. And he is life. He created all of life. You know, the full, just the fullness of God, you know, when he brought this whole universe into being was to infuse life into it. Um, so he's life. He created life. He gives life. He is abundant life. Not just life, but as he told us, he came that we may have life and abundant life, right? And even the woman uh, who was at the well, you know, she, remember the one who came on, on the Samarian woman, Samaritan woman, who came to the well at midday, you know, when Jesus was alone there and he started talking to her. He told her that if you drink the water I give you, it will well up within you and become a spring, you know, and you will never be thirsty again, which is like a spring. Maybe it's not what he said, but it is like a spring. I think it is what he said, that it is, it'll become a spring of living water. And whoever drinks of this water will never be thirsty again. I'm going to find it before I, you know, before it sounds like I'm making stuff up. <laughs> it's right here. I love this Bible for the illustrations. Such a good little bookmark. Um, so... 
Jesus, hey, listen, he says, if you only knew what God gives, this is in John 4 and 10. If you only knew what God gives and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would ask him and he would give you life giving water. And then further on, he says, the water that I will give will become a spring which will provide them, whoever drinks it, with life-giving water and give them eternal life. So let me reiterate that point, that God is, God is life. He created life. He's not just life. He's life abundant and he is life eternal. That's awesome news, my friends. So even death is just a falling asleep, quite literally, because he has power over death, and that power is his life, you know, and we see it, right, in today's gospel, like that little girl who was told, Talita, kum, me, kumi, or kum, uh, depending on your translation, um, and one thing I want to point out in that gospel, um, my mom sent me a message, thanks mom, so great, is, um, and don't worry if I keep turning to the computer, I'm just trying to make sure that the screen stays awake, um, my mom, in the message she sent me about today's gospel, it's now, so when Jesus uh, is on the way to Jairus, and I'll, I'll hop around a bit, huh? but um, remember there's the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 good years. I'll come back to her in a moment. So that's kind of um, uh, interjection takes place, if you want, as he's on his way to Jairus' house. And then, um, some people, <laughs> I like the way our priest put it, like these people came and told him, told Jairus, you know, like, your girl is dead, stop bothering, why bother the master anymore, you know? And I love in French, the way it goes, it says, um, it says like this, it reads like this, uh, huh. maybe I won't read too much, but just for the benefit of the, those who are English, because why should I speak to you in French? If, not the thing but here's what i just want to point out they go like this they say ta fille vient de mourir your girl just died a quoi bon déranger encore le maître a quoi bon like what's the point of disturbing the master any further can you imagine like these people the so the father is in the middle like he's his daughter is dying right like she's sick deadly sick she's in bed he's running to jesus you know in a state of deep distress and he's bringing Jesus to the house and then these people with no not too much gentleness will just come and tell him your girl's dead you know like why you bother like what's the point of disturbing the master in fact a quoi bon uh, déranger encore le maître you know oh, ouch like thanks for the faith people and not even that thanks for the kindness and the gentleness you know not um, and then in the translation my mom sent me, it goes, Jesus, ignoring what they said, turned to Jairus and said to him, do not fear, only believe. That's all. <laughs> you know, he didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to do any grand gestures. He didn't have to, like, I don't know, beg and plead and weep and wail, like, oh my God, the girl is... He just was told, do not fear, only believe simplicity that eh? God is a God of simplicity mm, the grace and the joy and the benefit of simplicity then uh, so then we know the story like right? right he goes and he brings the girl back to life previously to that remember this woman with the flow of blood for 12 12 solid years right um oh by the way just going back to those people those those people our parish priest calls him them les incredules you know the the infidels if i can use that term you know not even that the the not even like those who just don't believe like how what would be the translation the incredulous i don't think so it doesn't translate that way in english but just those who you know, the ones where you just go, <laughs> you know, the ones where it's just like, not only do they not believe, but with their words, they try to discourage other people. How many times have we come across such people? You've got your dream, you know, and they'll be like, I don't know about that, you know, or like, okay, that's good, that's good, but really, really? 
you know or um let me tell you i told you that what you were trying to do is going to fail what's the point now of continuing what's the point now of asking for help what you know like the so they not only not believe but they are harsh in a way that makes it look like uh, like they're being good like what's the point of disturbing the master you know like they're making it look like you shouldn't disturb jesus like but really they're like they don't believe they're not for you they're not interested in supporting your dream they're not interested in even putting aside your dream in growing in seeing you exercise your faith okay i'm not here to judge anyone my friends but let me just be real i used to be and in many ways i i pray that god delivers me from naivety naivety because that one i i have you know it's it's an area that i need to to improve in the sense that i really would try to accept everyone and uh try to be good to everyone which is you you should right you must love your enemies you know and you don't repay evil for evil um and in fact something else i've discovered is that when evil things happen to me this is a grand opportunity to exercise faith in god who is has power over evil and also my christian calling which is never to return evil for evil i love how saint paul puts it but to repay good uh, to repay evil with good and in this way you heap up burning coals on your enemy's head right and they burn with shame how much better to instead of being when you're insulted instead of being insulted forgive you know instead of when something's been stolen from you instead of feeling deprived let it go and know that god who is the one who gave it to you can give you so much more and in any case thieves they never really do grow rich and they never really benefit from the things that they take from other people and i wonder if they even sleep at night uh, at all if they have one good night anyway um so what i i just wanted to say is that i am not judging people but i'm slowly coming to know that the holy spirit speaks you know and he can guide me especially towards uh, i'll speak for myself um you know that intuition that i feel about someone or about a situation i'm more and more starting to listen to it i never always did i'll be very honest i often would think oh but i need to seek advice from or get information about and yet Remember last time I told you about the divine download yet all the information and advice that I need is quite possibly coming from above and I'll put a big caveat here when seeking information and advice and I think Sirach says it very very well um be careful who you're asking right uh, <laughs> what does he say he, I've just I've just opened his book he says and it's Ecclesiastes rather he re, he says that um uh, Ugh, I can't find it now but uh, it's something to the effect of take advice from one in 1000 people if that you know um and he says oh I think I know where exactly where it is exactly where it is pardon me I should have uh, marked it but again I do not script um he Sirach tells us that oh um, where is it he tells us that you should listen to your own heart because it doesn't it cuz it knows far more uh oh, I can't find it guys I'm very sorry about this uh and it's not Sirach it's Ecclesiastes who tells us to listen so yeah it's good to listen and to take advice from people but equally important and equally good is to listen to your own heart which I believe is the intuition um because it doesn't misguide you and it doesn't lie to you i'll find it maybe for another video it's just that this one is getting long um but it certainly is here in the book of ecclesiastes okay so um all that to say that um you know these incredules who come to you and tell you don't bother don't bother god anymore don't pray anymore 
don't try for your for your desire and your dream anymore don't try to be so united to god anymore like look at all these disastrous things that have happened to you surely if god were listening you know the story all too well you know i don't want to repeat and emphasize what those people are like but if jesus himself ignored them and turned to jairus and said don't fear only believe then please t take jesus at his word ignore those people don't fear only believe like this woman who courageously you know in her heart in her intuition knew that after 12 good years of spending everything that she had you know and suffering much at the hands of doctors um, and never getting any better on the contrary this is what mark says you know on the contrary she grew worse um, she knew in her heart that if she could just touch the robe of Jesus, she'd be well. So, thank God this woman listened to what was deep in her heart, you know. Thank God that she, you know, had the courage. I'm sure if she said this idea to anyone, they'd be like, are you stupid? All these years you've spent time, money, and energy. Now you think that just touching the robe of some itinerant preacher is going to make you well? Ha, huh, guess what? It did. And that idea was more very likely a divine download. Okay, guys, I'm not saying don't seek advice. I'm not saying don't get spiritual direction. I'm not saying don't go to a counselor. Do these things. But I am saying take time. Take a lot of time. May I find take more time even to be quiet. You need this. You need this. I'm sorry you do. You will need to read this. And don't just read. Re you need to pray first you need this in a big way i keep just it's been a while i thought to myself the other day it's been a while i haven't promoted my mother's tools um, but you need this i'm telling you if nothing else this this will help you she not the okay this prayer, she will help you honestly she who had a mission that was united to god and whose heart was so pure and was never self-seeking she will give you advice and information that will move you forward <laughs> upwards if you know what i mean so use this use this guys and listen to the voice that speaks the still small voice eh? the voice in the middle of the storm we saw it in job last week um, that still small voice that spoke to prophet Elijah, that still small voice that speaks to you from within that tells you go and touch his robe, you know. And then this woman, what I love about her, there was something, a prayer resource I'm reading, I'm using, Prayers You Go. Fantastic, I love it. The music is so great and the meditations are beautiful. Um, what today's uh, meditation was about is that she told him the whole truth. Her whole truth, you know, when Jesus said, who touched me right like in kiswahili nani aliniguza which means like she came she touched his heart you know with her faith and with her you know in spite of how stupid it might have looked she touched his heart and she got her healing and jesus said don't fear daughter your faith has made you well right so all that to say have faith have faith in jesus have faith in the divine physician. Uh, something our parish priest pointed out, you know, because he asked us to pray for the sick today. You know, um, I don't know about you, but me, I'm, there was two twice in my life. I, like, I'm, I won't say it's serious sickness. Thanks be to God. But I've experienced debilitating pain, you know, twice. I had back pain that just, eh, back pain is something else. If it gets you, whoa, I had pain. To the point where i could not even pray i couldn't i could not it and i i really understand how when people are sick um, at a time i had a parent who was sick um one time rather I, I did and i understand when someone is sick you don't have time to pray you don't have energy you don't maybe you're not even conscious jairus daughter couldn't get up and go to jesus her father is the one who ran to him and asked him to come and help can we pray also for the sick who don't have the ability? Uh, can we pray in their place is what our parish priest asked us to do today. Um, 
Yeah. So, um, you know, and lift, lift these people up to touch just the robe of Jesus. Something in this booklet uh, says that in, at that time, they believed that the clothes of someone um, incorporated or kind of um, just trying to get the word here. Toucher les vêtements de quelqu'un, c'est l'atteindre lui-même. Uh, okay, dans la culture de l'époque, le vêtement est le symbole de la personnalité. In the culture of the time, clothing or clothes, someone's clothes were the symbol of their personality, right? Um, so this woman, can we lift the way she touched the robe of Jesus just the hem? Can we also bring our sake? And by the way, I think this is all of us. If not physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in our memories, in our life experience, we have had sickness. We have all been touched by this work, this the, the, the pain and the suffering of being a human being in this world, right? So can we all lift ourselves up, particularly those who can't do it for themselves, to touch, just to touch the robe of Jesus? Um, one last thing I'll just point out is... Uh, our parish priest, thanks God, thank God for pa Father Pascal, he's so good. Um, he said, the way this woman, you know, there's nothing in the gospel that is wasted, ever. Eh? He points out that this woman, uh, Mark, and I told you last week, Mark is very brief in his gospels and straight to the point. So he really describes this situation well. Eh? Um, and Mark, as you know, um, okay, he describes the situation well and he not one word is wasted, eh? Because he tells us that um, uh, in femme, okay, I, I won't read it all in French, but basically uh, she had a hemorrhage for 12 years. She had suffered much. Remember what I just said at the hands of many doctors? Um, and instead of getting better, she got worse. Huh? Um, what our priest pointed out is that this all goes to show this description of the scene, this woman, and really the anguish. Can you imagine 12 good years. I mean, I, I imagine that it's night and day, this hemorrhage, which is just not stopping. Um, and having suffered painful treatments, expensive treatments, only to not get better. For, and not for 12 minutes or 12 hours, 12 days, 12 years this woman had suffered this. Um, now she turns to Jesus, which is brilliant. You know, she had intuition um and our priest was saying this goes to show that the real and true physician is jesus christ again i'm not saying don't go to the doctor that is not the point at all the point is turn to the true physician and only the simplicity that you need the only thing you need is faith Okay, guys, this one is such a long video, unscripted, um, but points that I really, I wanted to make. And I've, I do make these videos for myself as reminders to myself because me, in the melee of the week, I often forget these things, but I want to be able to turn back to them and remember. So just to recap, okay, simple, all you need, you especially, you Betty, simplicity, faith. Don't fear, only believe, and know that God is life. He created life. He gives life, life in all abundance, and life eternal. So let life come forth. Let life, your own intuition, as your heart speaks to you, let that life bubble up as a spring and give you eternal life because it is none other than the source of all life who is giving it to you. All right. Thank you so much. Gosh, if anyone got to the end of this video, God love you. God love you. Um, thank you for listening. Heavenly Father, thank you for anyone who watched, um, anyone who may be touched. Lord, my prayer is that I lift up any and all of my viewers to you to touch the hem of your garment and let power flow from you into them. May their faith make them well, Lord. May their faith give them life, Lord. May their faith allow them to be all that you call them to be and 
so much more um, anything more than anything we can ask or imagine in the name of Jesus I make this prayer trusting believing fully that I am heard and that I am answered and I confide it to the intercession of our beloved Mother Mary Amen in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit thank you guys God love you bye